At this point, the critique of wokeness as a religion is becoming more and more common. You can now see this pretty regularly from your average conservative commentator, from your IDW types. Everybody seems to finally be able to see this aspect of what's happening in our culture. And I do think that it's important that people grasp that dynamic. I think that is overall a good thing. However, there is a downside, and I think that downside is that a lot of people are learning the wrong lesson. The takeaway for many people who oppose wokeness from kind of the IDW rationalist skeptic sphere is that religion is bad. And wokeness is just kind of liberalism or progressivism that morphed into a religion. And that's where things went wrong. That's where things went off the rails. If you could just keep progressivism rooted in science and rationality and reason, then it would be fine. It's only when it approaches this religious fervor that it really has any problems. And of course, one of the reasons that they come to this conclusion is it fits into their framework. Most of these people came from the new atheist movement. A lot of them were secular liberals. And so this just kind of feeds into their idea that religion is the ultimate problem. And if we could just eliminate it, then human beings could go and live in their utopian rationalist paradise. They don't actually want to get rid of liberalism or progressivism. All they really want to do is roll it back to the last patch. The one that they felt safe in. The one that they were in control of. Instead of learning the lesson that really religion is inevitable, that it's part of humanity, it's something that you can't get rid of, the lesson they learned is we should just go back to the 1990s. Return to the fresh prince of Bel Air, as my friend academic agent likes to say. But they aren't alone. A lot of the Marxists that I've been talking to have the same delusion that we can just get rid of the wokeness, get rid of the progressivism, and return to the more rational age. We also have more secular right-wingers who have the same assumption. They're really only here because they oppose the wokeness, and once it's gone, they're more than willing to try to return to the liberal status quo. And to some extent, that's a mistake that I can understand. All of us have had this concept drilled into our head that the government is some kind of morally neutral, secular arbiter of law. That we can set up some kind of objective system that sits outside the judgments of man and can impose this rationality upon us. As Carl Schmidt points out, one of the things liberalism did was kind of propose this devil's bargain, where we would take these unresolvable cultural differences, the big questions like the meaning of life and the nature of the divine, and we would place them off limits to allow for economic cooperation. The economic incentives had frankly become too good for most people to ignore, and after many hundreds of years of religious wars in Europe, many people were simply too tired and wanted some kind of respite from this conflict. But as Schmidt points out, this promise was always a lie. It was always a sleight of hand. Government did not become neutral or objective because it put questions of morality and meaning into some separate sphere. Even though in most liberal democracies kings had been eliminated, somebody was still running these governments. Somebody's priorities were still operating in the background. Somebody's morality was still informing decisions. The secular state simply pretended that by transferring things to the material, by making their agents managers and experts, they had somehow become objective and immune to ideology. You just replace your priests with psychologists and sociologists, and now your religion is actually a science. And this trick certainly worked for a while. The ability to get everybody on board with the economic plan resulted in great abundance. Fewer people starved. More diseases were cured. Lifespans lengthened. The plan didn't actually seem to remove war, though, which was kind of the original selling point. Conflicts continued, and we saw some of the most horrific wars that humanity has ever experienced, but they were fought over ideologies instead of religions. I guess that was seen as an improvement. Either way, as progress slowed down and the abundance no longer seemed like the miracle it had been before, the spiritual cost of ignoring meaning started to catch up with modern societies. 
and the decentralized mess of ideologies that had been pasted together to advance liberalism clearly wasn't cutting it anymore. All you have to do is look at the statistics when it comes to loneliness and feelings of meaninglessness and deaths of despair. It's not really hard to see why people were looking for a more spiritually animating form of progressivism to take hold. But like I said, a large number of people both left and right simply want to roll things back. Reset the fiction of a objective, secular, neutral government. But this time with better guardrails, better containment, to make sure none of that messy, disgusting, poisonous religion works its way back in. Hoping, I guess, that if we get a more effective slate of Marvel movies, it will distract people from the fact that the things that they're consuming and the goals that are being set before them are bloodless and sterile and hollow. And who knows, maybe they'll succeed for a small amount of time, but I kind of doubt it. This thing is doomed to fail. We aren't meant to put these questions to the side. We aren't meant to lead lives where we don't address the big things, where we don't talk about the big things, where we don't passionately care about the big things. If we want to return to a more authentic way of being, if we want to return to meaning and purpose, pursuing the good and the beautiful and the true, then we must return to addressing the big issues of life. And yeah, that can be scary because it comes with serious implications. These issues were placed on the shelf for a reason. In many cases, they caused wars because the issues were unresolvable in a rational manner. And as a society that has been trained to ignore the metaphysical, to ignore the spiritual, to dismiss anything that can't be quantified on a spreadsheet or observed in a test tube, It can be difficult for us to even envision a world in which those things return to prominence, a world in which those things once again become the center of everyday life and become the serious business of every people and every nation. But it's important to remember that even when we thought we had safely packed those things away, even when we thought we had safely put them out of bounds of our society, that was never really the case. They were always operating in the background. It was always a lie that those things had been put on hold. We simply put them out of view of the average person and left them in control of a select few. We'll never truly know how much of the advancements in science and technology were due to this deal. It's impossible to really go back and test the counterfactual, but either way, we now know that the costs, the spiritual costs, are coming due. And for most people, they're clearly too much to bear. We're simply going to have to find a way to discard this comforting myth of the secular society, because we're quickly finding that the meaningless life is the one that's truly not worth living. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, if you like the video, please go ahead and click like. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is a great time to do so. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter or you'd like to support my work on Subscribestar, like the amazing people who are currently having their names shown on the screen, you can do that by following the link down below the video. That's also where you'll find links to my Rumble channel and Odyssey channel. I really hope you'll subscribe to one of those so that you've always got a way to find me. And you'll also find a link to the merch store if you want to pick something up there. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, I'll talk to you next time.